All right, all right, all right, all right. So, hi, my name is Ava. I loaded in and the guild's note was another day, well, another day. And that's honestly how I feel right now about doing this, but <laughs> this one's actually good. And anyone that doesn't think it's good, um, you need to like get outside and laugh at something because this one's funny. Okay, so there was this Reddit post by, I mean, this guy's called Comedian, so, I'm going to say that they, they were actually making a joke, but anyway, it, the, the topic was why, question mark, okay? And then you go to read it, and there's a screenshot of, like, this, um, you know, pretty thick, armored out lady, right, in the game. Um, and it looks like it's probably Reclamation Rock, so I'm going to go try and find the same lady and, and really rate her here. But what he says is, why did they make some of the NPCs hot as hell? <laughs> cry faces, cry faces, cry faces. They knew what they were doing, and they did it perfectly. This made me love the game a thousand times more. Okay, so I honestly, I never actually considered how attractive maybe some of the characters are in the game, but I feel like it's worth checking some people out and giving like a nice, you know, maybe the 10 hottest characters in Neverwinter that I come across. Um, and kind of maybe give it a little, you know, I don't know, find out maybe who is the hottest characters. I do feel like I need to put Makos on there, um, just because he's, you got a lot of story in there. But other than that, I'm kind of open-minded. I think Makos is probably definitely going to be on there. I'm thinking that we, uh, go look for some. I think the first important thing, though, is to go to Reclamation Rock and check out this person. I, from the background of it, the it looks like I used to AFK here, and uh, that looks like where I used to AFK. So I'm surprised I never noticed this lady if she's just, like, making the game a thousand times better. Oh? All right. <laughs> okay, so this is the Vigilant Paladin, but I imagine she's, you know, got more of a fantasy name. Okay, so I just, like, Googled D&D &D paladin names. Um, one of the first ones that came up was Brina. Sure. Okay, so let's call her Brina. So she has an actual name. So Brina, yeah, she is attractive, um, I think. I can't really see under the helmet, but as far as armor goes, she's kitted out. She really is. She looks good. Um, and I, I would say that getting to Reclamation Rock at that point, I probably would be kind of, I, I feel like I would probably be pretty miserable at that point in the leveling process. So I could see how it would make it a much better uh, experience in the game. So, uh, yeah. Okay. You know, I'll put her in my top 10 because... I kind of agree. We'll let the guy have it. I feel like looking for hot characters, we want to look in hot places. So let's go check out the fiery pit, maybe. Oh, we got Harper Simmons here. She's not bad. She's kind of cut off, though. Well, we've got the vendor over here. Maybe I don't need to look at hot places, but I think we'll go check out as well. Um, Omu's pretty hot. It looks like it's really humid there. Okay. <laughs> Number 10 on my list, Mokabaro is, look at the tips, okay? And he's got, what? <laughs> what was that, my guy? Okay, he's got really thick thighs, just the muscles, the wings, the tips, the big eyes, and that beak. Um, okay, he's number 10. I, everything about this look I really like. And the fact that he probably, if you needed to like go to the hospital or something, he probably could fly you there. Okay, I feel like this guy gets a little bit of like a talk, but I don't necessarily think that he can make the number 10 because I feel like it's a little bit too, um, you know, he never really paid us out for some of the promises he's made and stuff like that. So I can't really put him in my number 10 spot because aside from the fact I think that he has a pretty decent potential uh, looks wise, I definitely don't think that he falls under it due to his choices in the past. So I'm sorry, Neverember, but I'm going to give you a little shout out because you're here. That's all, really. <laughs> That's the only reason why. Guys, I'm literally running around the game, and I'm going to some of the places that are usually the most populated, and usually right here in Chol, in the port, was one of the most populated parts of the game where everyone just stood to, like, run content together. Not me, I wasn't a part of the cool kids, but there was always tons of people here, and there's only one instance, and there's nobody here. 
It's nobody here. What did Wild Space do? What did Wild Space do? Okay, Krusty Celeste, hear me out, has, you know, seen some shit. I think that Celeste at the Krusty level, yeah, I think that she kind of fits that number nine role. And her story, you know, the back, the back part of the story is good. And she's obviously in her sassy era. And she, like, called Makos a bad name. Uh, a lich, really. It's not a bad name. But it rhymes with the bad word. And um, I think that's what she was trying to say. But anyway, she definitely gives off, like, that, like, Celeste has, like, peaked as far as personality goes in the Cholt era. And so I, that's why I have to give her a number nine in this crusty Celeste phase for sure. Okay, so for my number eight spot, I'm going for a more obvious. I think Harper Wendell is probably the most attractive Harper uh, just because she's got the red hair. I really like red hair, but she's got like really pretty eyes. You know, she's a hunter. She's just got a cool outfit. Um, and she just does not look happy to see you. So I feel like I really have to chase her um, because I feel like I really know who my number seven spot is. Um, but it was really kind of a toss up. So I'm going to say Harper Wendell for obviousness. Okay. Okay. So here's my obvious number seven. We have Sergeant Knox. Um, and I wouldn't imagine that um, anyone would disagree because I feel like he literally carries you through the game. Not only does he guide you, but like he's really appreciated in his community. Like you can even see in the left of this corner, there's a big uh, painting of him um, just being really cool. He's really buff. He's got great hair. He's got a great beard. He like stays groomed. I Something about a one-eyed you know, with the patch thing is really attractive, okay? He has a great voice. And if Neverwinter had, like, a newspaper, I feel like they could put out something like Knox Weekly, and it would just be him talking about all of his adventures because this guy's, like, in so many zones, like, helping you out and doing stuff. So I feel like between uh, the Neverember Times and Knox Weekly, I'm sure Knox Weekly's probably got more adventure in it, and Neverember Times got more, like, the economy in it. Yeah, I mean, in case you're curious, this is what the painting looked like. If they had player housing in this game, I definitely would have this above my bed. Okay, so we're about to go in and meet our number seven. Okay, we're about to go in and meet our number six spot. This is another one. This is probably the only woman in this whole game that I let beat me up so much as well. And honestly, there's not much not to like about her, um, but it's definitely got to be Zariel. Like, I can't get too close because she's going to literally kill me for a bit. Like, Why are you here again, lady? I love everything about Zariel. I liked the wings. I liked the, uh, what are those called? Blindfolds. Uh, I loved the sword, uh, the dress. She's just so etheric uh, and like everything about her, even when she gets into like the long crusty toes, like dark look too. I mean, I'm not hating on that either, but I think that Zariel is probably like one of the most attractive. And uh, honestly, what am I doing? I was such a fan of Zariel that I actually, I got her from the stupid event where you had to race everyone to get in the top. Where is she? There she is. Okay. We got her out. Yeah, look at her. I mean, this is literally the Zariel from it. People complain because she's so big. I mean, I was in like Never Death or something with her one time because she's account wide, so you can just pull her out. And someone came over and started trying to fight her because obviously she is an enemy in the game. Imagine her just in the open world, just hitting daunts on you and stuff. Oh, oh, that would be cool. Open world boss. I like her. But yeah, I mean, she has a little bit of differences, but ultimately it's the exact same. And I think she's just so pretty. Um, so yeah, I'm going to put her in my number six spot because there's just some people that really can't be beat. Zariel v. Zariel. Wait, why did she automatically? <laughs> she saw herself and said, oh, hell no. <laughs> why? Oh, I got this. I got this. Okay, I think this takes me to my number four spot, uh, which is Harshnag. Uh, he's like a big giant in Sea of Moving Ice. You get like a lot with him, but I think that just because he's a massive giant, gives me Viking vibes, has a really cool helmet. There's like not much to not like about him. And I think he's just kind of one of those that definitely made the game a thousand times better for me. But I do like when you ask him, why do you fight against your own kind? And he says, my reasons are my own, but to be clear of my intent, 
repent. I want to stop the evil my people have brought upon this world, much like you do for other small folk. And I think a lot of us can relate to that because, you know, we sometimes want to fight against our own kind for the betterment, you know, of humankind, right? That's really deep. <laughs> that is very understandable. Yeah, good job. Harsh snack. Number five. Okay, so we're going to go in and meet our number four, but it has to be Hallister. I mean, look at this guy. He's everything I think Dumbledore and Gandalf kind of want to be. He's got like good volume in his hair. He's literally gone mad, which I think is always cool for like old guys. And then like, yeah, just look at him. He just looks so cool. Like, have you ever taken a look? Like, I wish we could have got this instead of just the cape with all the smileys. Like, look at that robes. He's just like, I'm going to still give him a number four, but that hurt. And honestly, you really know someone is just really attractive and making the game a thousand times better if you can uh, go in and fight them thousands of times and still think that they are, you know, as good as they were from the first day. So, Hallister, buddy, I think you got my number four spot. Okay, and then we got Omu Makos, right? And I have to give this guy, I have to say, probably number one. Okay, he's got a really sad face, and I know maybe some people would say like Dritz could be number one, but I think Dritz is a bit overrated, just like I think Legolas ended up being overrated, and like Gimli is kind of the hot one. Anyway, I think Makos has just got that appeal. Aside from the fact he's a warlock, he's might be a little bit slender, but he's got a cool tail. Um, I don't know, the pointy chin thing is pretty cool and uh, the just the eyes the really red eyes so he might be my number one okay i'm gonna take you to who i think is probably the second hottest character in neverwinter i mean if you want to actually know how to get there you can uh it's, it's like right here on the map where i'm at uh, and you just need like an arcana skill kit or be on a character that can go in but if you just click on this the character up here is like a little easter egg um, I mean, I don't know, they're known as Val, so, I mean, Valindra, right? So this is like human form Valindra, okay? First of all, I wish my character could look like this because Yowza, um, but I thought this was cool when Omu came out and we saw this person up here and didn't really know how to get to them. We were like jumping off the top and everything and we couldn't get to them. Turns out there's like a secret tunnel in the Undercity and you can go up here and chat with her. And this could be old news, but I think it's pretty cool. She like talks to you for a minute and stuff and she's like, you know, whatever. She's chatting with you, but I don't want to like, I don't want to spoil it too much on anything that she says or anything like that. But yes, yeah, so Valindra was in Omu. She's just hanging out there and you could chat with her. Um, it, yeah, and she, but you need like an arcana skill kit or be on like a warlock or a wizard or whatever to go up. But yeah, I think, uh, the eyeshadow, the outfit, the hair, I mean, the hair and the eyeshadow and stuff like that. Like, I feel like maybe the like dark circle, I mean, I feel like I kind of have this look, um, but more with effort and, uh, <laughs> she just effortlessly has like this look. But anyway, I think she is number two um which means personally i think that number one is the other version of valindra that's just me you can't compete with that so makos might need to take a couple steps back into like the number third spot and so we would have um old crusty uh all bones skeleton valindra and then human form valindra and then make ghost for number three okay so okay so you probably thought that i was done at number one but you would be wrong actually because just like you know like jujitsu kaisen there is a zero um i have to say brunor Battlehammer might be that character who cannot be touched everything about doors i already told you i like gimli uh i like the duran uh folk uh pretty much all of them uh if you get me around dwarves i'm immediately interested so brunor i think might be like a really important guy but he keeps on like a half broken helmet probably for sentimental purposes great beard keeps it together it's not too long so he can show off his armor and you know he's just got so much appeal his armor is also just really freaking cool if you get close you're gonna get bit kind of vibe he's also sitting at the table with regis over here which you can kind of see and i mean 
aside from the fact he's a great companion in leveling especially, Regis is fly, okay? He also is up here with Brunor. He seems like someone you really would want to party with. So I have to say Regis is there with Brunor. And of course, Dritz. Uh, he, Dritz is another guy that... Wait, Dritz was just here. What are you doing? Okay, well, he's no longer in the top because, uh, you know, he's... Dude, he's just taking a lap. He's got ADHD like me. He just can't stop. This gives me like Legolas, Gimli, um, you know, little Frodo or whatever, Sam, Mary Pippin. It gives me vibes right here on that. These three, of course, you can't say that they're not like untouchable. Yeah, that's about it, guys. I thought that would be fun. And I think it's really funny if really cool looking characters makes the game a thousand times better for you. I do think that there are some really great characters in D&D, and I think Neverwinter does some really fun ones. But uh, yeah, that's my top 10 list of, I think, NPCs and other characters that should be appreciated in Neverwinter. Anyway, guys, maybe the next one will be a useful video. Oh, by the way, I have a new thing called a Patreon, and that is where you can just kind of go and see everything that I'm doing. Surprisingly enough, I have been doing things, even though I might not be making a lot of Neverwinter videos, I have been doing other things like playing other games and recording it in like story mode settings. I've also been covering comic books, and I've been playing The Sims and doing stupid stuff on there. Really, really stupid stuff. Don't even go don't even go watch that stuff actually uh but yeah i've been doing a lot of different random things and if you wanted to check it all out it's all sourced to my patreon which will be in the link below as well as my socials okay guys i'll see you next time Bye bye <laughs>